Pero siya, Lord, siya, siya, Dad, He's the one who shamed us. You give Him the fat and gap. I'm the obedient one. I'm the one who gets nothing. Verse 30. And He said to him, Son, my son. That word son there is a very affectionate word. My son, you have always been with me. And all that is mine is yours. And when he was saying that, he was pleading his son. He was hoping, son, son, have a change of heart. Have a change of heart, son. We had to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours who was dead and has began to live. And he was lost and has been found. You know, this passage is hanging. But it teaches us a lot of things. It teaches us that there is much rejoicing when we repent. You know, the earlier passage, right? The lost sheep, there is much rejoicing in heaven. The lost coin, there's still much. Look at that. Look at look at verse five, 6. Oh, verse 4. What man among you who has a hundred sheep has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? When he found it, he lays it on his shoulder rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep, which was lost. Verse 7, I tell you the same way. There will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous person who needs no repentance. Verse 8, <coughs> Or what woman, if he has ten silver coins, loses one coin, does not light up a lamp, and sweeps up his house, and search carefully until he finds it. When she found, found it, she calls together her friends and, and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I have lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. So the first story is, there's much rejoicing in heaven. The second story is, there is much rejoicing. Imagine, lost sheep, much rejoicing. Lost coin, much rejoicing. What more lost son? There is much rejoicing. When one sinner repents. You know, if you're in sin right now, a sin that you've been really hanging on for a long time, if you repent of that sin, and say, Lord, I have done you wrong on this. Forgive me. If there was a genuine repentance in your part of a sin, guess what? There is much rejoicing in heaven. Here also we see the greatness of the love of the Father. No matter what you do, you cannot sin enough for God not to love you. There is no sin big enough that the love of the Father cannot cover. Amazing love. Amazing grace. Thirdly, I want to extend the story. I will try to give an ending which is not found in scripture. I will try to make a case. The story ends here in verse 32. The father pleading to the son, right? Son, come on, change your heart, change your mind. In 31, son, you have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice for the brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. 
the question is, what happened to the sun? Can I tell you what I think happened to the sun? The sun got really angry now. He couldn't accept the verdict of the father. He started calling his friends and telling his friends, Guys, can you believe this? This is what my dad did to me. Let's kill him. So the son waited for an opportune moment, got a stone, called his father, and the, when the father looked at him, got the slope and slammed it on his head. The father fell, and the son had his stone hitting the father in the head saying, why did you forgive him? Why did you forgive him? Why did you forgive him? You were not supposed to forgive him. He, ha he was full of anger. He beat his father to death. <sighs> Why do I say that that is a story? Why do I say that that is a tragic ending of the story. You know why? Go to verse, go to verse one of that, of that chapter. Now all the tax collector and the sinners were coming near to him to listen to him. Both the Pharisees and the, and the scribes began to grumble saying, this man is receiving sinners and eats with them. The older brother was the Pharisees and the scribes. That's why Jesus told the parable, pinatatamaan yung Pharisees and scribes because the Pharisees and scribes want only them to be saved. The Pharisees were known to follow the commandments so that that, that I obeyed you naman ah. I followed all your commands. Why are you accepting this man a sinner? Go, go, go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 verse 14. But the Pharisee went out and conspired against him as to how they might destroy him. Or as how they might kill him. The Pharisees wanted Jesus dead. Why? He was a blasphemer. He was eating with sinners. He was accepting people in the kingdom of God. He was not supposed to accept sinners. He was not supposed to eat with publicans. They conspired to kill him. And that's why in Matthew chap chapter 27, they said, crucify him, crucify him. And this older brother is the Pharisee. He could not accept other people. Lord, kami lang pwede mong isave. Kami lang yung mabait. Why do you accept these other sinners? And when he couldn't accept that, he beat him to death. When the Pharisees could not accept the teaching of Jesus, that he accepts sinners into the kingdom of God for those who repent and believe there is restoration, we will kill you. And they were triumphant. That is a story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son is not the young brother. It's the other brother.
We always thought that young brothers and brothers got sad, right? Not to me. Are we the same? Are we not joyful when, when people are repents? Are, are, are we unforgiving? Do we lack understanding? Are we, are we more righteous than God? Is our standards more holier than Him? It's easy to be judgmental. We always want to be the number one. We always want to be the leader, the head. We want to be the beta, the righteous. Like the apostles. Lord, who will be the greatest? Ako ba? I pray that this morning we may realize that we are the prodigal son. We are the one who complains to God a lot about why this thing happened, that thing happened. But the great story here is that if we are like the first younger son, if we repent of our sin, God would equally forgive us of all our pride, of all our sins, and of all our mistakes. Thus says the Lord, the prodigal son. Amen. For a last song.